Hi everyone, welcome to this video today where we're going to look at ways in which you can streamline your live video production with vMix. Now there are a couple of different areas that in which you can do this and today we're going to cover how you can combine shortcuts and triggers in order to help streamline your production. Now we already have videos about triggers and shortcuts separately on how to do them and how to set them up, so you can check out those in the description below. Many people that do live video production or live streaming have a very small production team. In fact, a lot of people do it with just one person. When we do our live monthly shows, I do all the production of the show as well as attempt to co-host it as well. Now this was even more prevalent on our last monthly show where I produced the whole thing and had to host the entire thing myself. So I wanted to make this video to show you how it was easy to kind of streamline your production because I know that I'm prone to forgetting things and making mistakes. So I thought I would make this video to try and help out those people that were doing small productions or even one man shows. Now all the stuff that we talk about today is also applicable to people that have massive productions, but I'm going to show you an example of how I set up my live show in this video. When I'm producing the live show, I always get pretty nervous leading up to it and I'm always worried about you know, something that I haven't set up or what haven't I done right, what have I forgotten to do. So I want to be doing as little as possible when I first start out my show in order to make sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. Now, it doesn't always work, but I do try my best to make sure that I have everything set up. So combining shortcuts and triggers really allows you to create a smooth production uh, when you're doing live streaming. Basically, you can set up your show to just press a couple of buttons and help automate a lot of the processes within vMix and in your live stream. Now, before I get started with my live production, I add all of my inputs into vMix. So I go to the add input menu and I add all my videos, cameras, titles, images, microphones, everything that I'm gonna need in my production, I add to vMix. That way I've got all my elements ready to go. Now, the first step to streamlining everything is to associate all of those inputs with different shortcuts. So you can use a keyboard, MIDI, X keys, Xbox controller, like we said, to set up shortcuts. Now the shortcuts allow you to set a function to a button that you press. So if I wanna change a camera, I'll have a camera set up, I'll have my microphones, I'll have my images all set up. So I press a button and that image will transition to the output or the program. So once I've got all that set up, I like to use a, an X keys device so that way I can mark out each different thing or MIDI controller, you could do the same way. You could add a marker to what you're doing just so I know exactly what I'm doing to make it streamlined as much as possible. Now, I also like to set up activators as well. So activators in vMix allow you to assign lights on your X keys or MIDI device so that you can say, know when a particular camera is on or know when your microphone is on. So I set those up as well just in case I'm worried about, oh, what cameras, what, what microphone is on or what camera is in the output. So once you've set up that, so once you've added all your inputs and then created your shortcuts, you're ready to start streamlining your production even further. Now, here's a quick look at my X keys device. Um, I've got one of the big ones with the T-bar and in the top right hand corner, you'll be able to see a giant intro button. Now this is where all of the magic starts for our production. So I've set this key up to go to the intro video. Okay, so for this intro video here, I've already set up my button. I found the button that I wanna use and I've got a cut function to go to my intro video. So that has already been set up and it's ready to go. So once I press it, it will play the intro video. So once I press that button, it's going to start the intro. And once that's started, the ball, the ball is rolling and my live production is on its way, ready to go. But I thought to myself, well, what else do I need to add to my intro? Like, what do I need to do at the start of a production? Of every production that I do, what am I gonna need to do? So that's where the, the triggers come into line for your vMix production, which makes things a lot easier. So basically I thought, well, once I hit the intro key, once I start the video, I want to, I really want to record it as well. So what I did is I'll go into the trigger settings of our intro video. So if we go to the intro video and we go to triggers. Now I've already got some set up and this is the first one I'm going to show you. So on transition in, we're going to start the recording. So what that will do is when I hit the button, 
it's going to play the video, but at the same time, it's going to start my recording, which means that it's one less thing that I need to worry about. Okay, so we've got that sorted. We've got the record so sorted, ready to go, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, what else might we want it to do? Well, we might want it to fade back to our camera when it finishes, so we don't have to worry about that transition. So what we would do is, um, on completion, we will fade to our main camera shot. So that's something that um, you might forget to do. You don't want to get stuck on the end of your video. You want to transition to your camera so you can be, hey everybody, welcome to the show. So that was a good intro, I guess. Uh, one thing that was very important is that you could actually hear me. So another thing you can do is, on completion of our intro video, is to turn on my microphone. So you probably notice a lot of times when people uh, start their shows, they'll be... And then they realize in the chat that someone's saying, oh, by the way, your cameras, uh, your audio is not working. So we've added the ability to, you know, turn on your microphone. So that's another thing that we add, which is something that we were always worried about. You, you might see in older videos, us pressing buttons until we kind of realized, hey, let's set up a trigger to do that. So we've set up a trigger to turn on our microphones. And finally, once we get to our main camera, our microphones are on, we've already started the recording. I also like to have my title display. So if you have a look here, you'll notice that we've got um, on completion, overlay input one, Tim title. Now we can set that duration and we can also add a delay to it as well. So we can delay it for a few seconds if you didn't want it to appear straight away. So that's a way you can easily you know, create an introduction to your show without having to worry about all these different elements. So this is what happens. We press the giant button that says intro. It's going to play our intro video. And at the start of that, it's going to record our live production. Then it's going to transition to our main camera. It's also going to turn on our microphones. And then after a certain period of time, it's going to overlay my title as well. So you've just knocked out five different production things that you need to worry about, all with one press of a button. So it really does streamline the intro and it's a lot less to worry about when you're doing your production. I know it's, I like to set shortcuts and triggers to do as much as possible. That way I don't have to worry about too many things when I'm actually doing it. So we'll show you a quick, um, we're gonna press the button here. I'll turn off my, Hey, so there we go. My audio is back on and my title is up. So you notice that the record started as well. So yeah, um, that's basically how we streamline the start of our show. Uh, we can press one button and it can do all that stuff at the start, which is super, you know, useful for us, especially me. I don't, I worry about stuff. I'm worried, oh, you know, I don't want to, don't want to, you know, stuff things up, but that's how I, how I set it up. Now, um, like I mentioned before, you know, we had the activator set up as well. So if you have a look on our keyboard, you'll be able to see, you know, we've got our audio and our camera on as well. So if I switch between the cameras, it will change the lighting anymore. If I turn it back on, you'll um, be able to see the light. So we have those lights set up just in case we're worried about something. Um, but yeah, you can watch the activators video to see how to do all of that. Now everything else in the in the show was fairly straightforward. As we showed you before, all of the buttons and information are, are already here. We just press a button to change the camera. All my intros, titles, um, sound effects are all set up on the, the keyboard and ready to go. All I need to do is press a button um, to go through that. And it, it's not like a hardware switcher. So hardware switchers, you know, are, are pretty rigid. You can, you know, press one camera, you've got to go here. You've got to put into preview and then you've got to go live, that type of thing. Whereas with, with vMix, with shortcuts and triggers, you're able to program whatever you like. So you, you've seen my X keys and my MIDI devices over the, over the years. Uh, it's all over the place, but that's how I like it. I want to know I can just press a button, cut straight to it, or, you know, turn my audio off and see what it looks like and do all that kind of stuff directly. Um, so you could set it out like a traditional switcher, no problem at all. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people that use smaller MIDI devices, set up one row of cameras for preview and output, 
and um, that kind of thing. But you know, with with the shortcuts, you can do it however you like, which is you know how I do most things. Now, um, there's also the ability to have the outro set up as well. So, like I showed you before, one button starts your intro and does all this stuff, and then you can also set it up for the outro as well. So, with my outro video, I have the ability to play the video by pressing the shortcut, hit the button, it starts playing. But then at the at the start of it, I believe, it turns off my microphone. So, I don't have to worry about saying something that I shouldn't after the, you know, when the outro goes, like, oh, phew. Glad that show's over, that type of thing. So it cuts out my microphone, and then at the end of the video, it's also going to turn off my recording as well. So that just stops your recording, finishes at the end. So if you started at the start, at the finish, you've got a full show ready to upload to YouTube or wherever, or to archive somewhere as well. So that's, um, that's another way to end things using shortcuts and triggers. Using the shortcut to press the button to perform the video, and then the trigger will allow you to turn off the microphone and the video, um, the recording. So I'll show you this. So we actually have on the transition in, we'll turn off the audio. Um, and on the completion, it will stop the recording. Now, I also had one in here to turn off Martin's audio as well when he came in via VMix call last week. And so that's how we uh, set up our outro video for the finish of our show. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, this video has really kind of only scratched the surface of what you can do with triggers and shortcuts. Uh, we've shown you how to use it with an intro and an outro, but we also use it in the show for um, like switching between from a, when a video finishes, we always make it go back to the main camera using a trigger. So there's plenty of different ways you can use it and it's totally up to your imagination as to how you're going to use triggers and shortcuts together. There's so many combinations that it's not funny. So it's really good for, you know, single man productions or single woman productions. Uh, and it's also good for really complicated stuff as well. If you've got a big production team, you could be doing multiple things um, in vMix that way. Now, it's also really good, like we mentioned, maybe for uh, volunteers. So you could have a, a single button, do multiple things for them. So they all they need to do is press one button to start and then another button to stop. And you could even create a preset of that put it on the desktop so then they have to click the preset, it would open up vMix and they press a button to start the show and then to finish the show as well. So that's a, another combination. But there's so many different things you can use it for. Uh, so thanks for watching today. If you have any questions about them, there's videos about triggers and shortcuts as well. And also, um, if you have any questions about vMix, feel free to contact us via vMix.com. So thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video. Click to watch another exciting vMix tutorial.